Hey, beautiful friends. We are back with another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Welcome. I am so thrilled you are here today. And we are going to talk all things on boarding. I know, I know having processes and systems in place doesn't exactly sound sexy, but if you want to improve client retention, if you want to decrease stress, simplify your business, processes and systems are absolutely crucial. And today we're going to talk specifically about onboarding because listen, when you onboard your clients in a way that is streamlined and simple and easy for them to follow and just click away and be done and be in your community and in your cli- on your client list, you are establishing your relationship and how it's going to go right there. And When they see that you care enough to make things simple for them, they're more likely to stick around and they're also more likely to refer you. And then you have just a constant flow of clients based on having one great process in place. So that's what we're going to dive into today. And my very special guest is Jeanette Peterson, and I'm going to bring her on in just a second. She is a faith and business consultant, and I think we're going to learn a ton from her today. And we're also going to leave the episode and feel like we've just been shown this incredible light because she is such a delight. Without further ado, Jeanette Peterson, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much, Robin, for having me on. I'm so excited for this. Mm, Me too. I am like such a little geek when it comes to all this stuff. I love to have (laughs) simplification, automation, and everything streamlined so that my life is easier, but also my client's life is easier. My podcast gets life for easier, all of those things. It's just, there are so many nuances in business. It's hard to own a business and it is a constant struggle to grow if we are constantly battling you know, headaches during the day instead of having things streamlined and automated. So I'm really happy to bring you on as a guest and to have you share your expertise with us and how to do some of these things so that we can live a better life within our businesses. So before we do that, though, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you? Yes. So I am a military veteran and I spent 11 years in the United States Air Force. And then I was a cybersecurity engineer by trade. And then I felt God calling me to something different. So I was like kind of struggling with what that looked like, but it ended up being using all of my tech expertise and my love for marketing and business and doing that here while I am homeschooling my kids and just living the life that God has called for me. So I just am so obsessed with with women and business and growing kingdom businesses. Mm, I love it so much. Um, I would love for you to touch on something you mentioned before and you kind of mentioned on it just now, but how you, you're really excited for this season because you really think God is calling women to be who we're meant to be. And I know your faith is really strong and I would love for you to share that perspective with the listeners. Yeah. So since I can remember, I've always worked with men. Like I was the the GM of a Jiffy Lou and I was the only woman who worked there. I joined the military in a male dominated career field of IT and tech. And then when I got out of the military, I was like, I don't know. I don't know why I've never had like a whole bunch of girlfriends either. I was not like the girlfriend girl. I was the boys girl. And so after leaving the military, I was like, maybe I'm supposed to work with women in some capacity. And so like, I've just been feeling this, like this underlying Holy spirit driven, like revival coming for women in business to just like take the gospel, take our swords, slay the devil, and just go all in on who God has created us to be. I feel like when, when God uses us for different things before we do what we're supposed to do, quote unquote, before we get to that next phase, he's showing us all these things and reasons why we want to work with who we want to work with. Cause I don't think that, that if I had been a girl's girl, I would necessarily be open to, to just working with women. I think I would have been like, I can work with anybody, but I, mm-hmm. I really feel called to just empowering women in the way that God has created us because I don't feel like we are less than, or we need to do something to make ourselves small, we are created in his perfect image, right? And if we're created in his perfect image, 
and we are called, we feel that underlying call to be bold and unapologetic because the word says that we can be not because we think we need to be strong, independent women. That's a whole different thing. But if we're called to do what God's work is, then we need to have the boldness and the veracity to be like, I'm doing what God has called me to do. Not because I feel like I should do this, but I'm empowered because of the blood that Jesus has shed for me. That's why I'm doing this. Not because Jeanette thinks she's so good at whatever It's because God has called me to this. And if I am not bold in this, then I am doing the other women that come in contact with me a disservice because they're not going to be able to be as bold as they can be. So I, I really feel like he's calling us as women to link arms and to, to go forth and to just do the things that we are meant to be and doing and stop worrying about what everybody else is saying. It doesn't even matter. We're here to please the father, nobody else. Oh, preach. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> That's so true. And I think, you know, I talk so much on the show about not being on social media, growing your business without it. And I'm not saying you can't be on social media. I mean, let's face it. I, I like to be on it periodically, you know, but I don't believe we have to be on it in order to grow a successful business. So if you feel called to be off of it, be off of it. But that goes along with what you just said is to not care what other people think. Like people may think I'm crazy when I say that, but I believe it with all my heart. I know people who are doing it, I'm doing it and it's possible. But I think it's really important to focus on what God is telling you to do, what he's leading you to, Everything he's providing for you, the knowledge, the gifts, the wisdom, the strength, everything to be able to follow through on what he has presented to you as your purpose. And I think it's so beautiful that you're doing that all in and and helping women. I mean, I think collectively there there are so many of us who who do need help, are afraid to ask for help or too stubborn to ask for help. It's not only men who don't want to ask for help. Oh, women are the same way. And I think part of that is that vulnerability that mm -hmm. we're afraid to step into. So I love that this is your focus. I love how you are just following God's call for you just so graciously and readily. It's beautiful. So, okay, I'm going to stop rambling. Let's talk about onboarding. Oh, onboarding is so fun because I feel like this is like your Disneyland moment. Like when people come in contact with you and they choose to like, they, they've got the no, they've got the like, they've got the trust and they're like, all right, I'm ready to go deeper with Robin. I'm ready to go deeper with Jeanette. What do I need to do? I'm going to pay her some money. Okay. So when they're like ready to pay you money, you want to make this like a Disneyland experience. You want to like hold their hand. You want to have the, the flowers growing in front of them. You just want to make it feel so comfortable and ready. A lot of people like, you know, they've got buyer's remorse as soon as they pay for something, whether it be lo low ticket or high ticket, they're like, oh, should I have done that? I don't know. But when you make this seem like such a great experience, they're like, oh, that yes, this is this is what I wanted. This is this feels good. And so I want to talk about just like low ticket versus high ticket and those onboarding sequences and what that could look like. So with a low ticket, you always want to get them to pay the invoice first and then sign the contract. So some some low ticket might not have a contract, but you want to have your terms of service, your terms of agreement, whatever that is, so they can they can see it, right? And so that'll be your contract or whatever just on your your page. So low ticket I'm talking about low price memberships, courses under $1000, um webinars that are one offs that are $100 or less or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Something really easy for them to say yes to. And then the first thing that, that you get from them after they pay the invoice, you need to have an automation set up to send them all the links or all the logins that they're going to need. So that way they already have it. They don't have to go looking for something and make sure it's really easy for them to click on a something to get the calendar reminders or click on something to get the Zoom link. So that way they can just put it on their calendar. Because I don't know about y'all, but if it's not on my calendar, I'm going to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So and I'm, I got to have it there. Yeah, me too. And I have to have it on both my electronic and my paper because the electronic is what is connected to all the automations. 
So it is absolutely critical in everything I do to have it up to date, but I also have to have that paper reminder. So I still have my planner, my paper planner, and I carry it with me wherever I go because <laughs> I'm old fashioned, <laughs> but it, I need the, the visual reminder in front of me too. Like I do, I, I can't just function on the digital aspect alone, probably because I'm old, but I love it. So I love paper <laughs> and I love pen and I love pencils. Um, but yes, absolutely. And I think having having those links accessible right away, but here's the key, make sure the links are correct because if they're incorrect, yes. the one thing that I've heard said, and I'm going to misquote this, so let's just call this a paraphrase, but don't let tech interfere with the quality of service you're providing or don't let tech get between you and your customer. So always make sure that you double check those links just as um, kind of like checking for typos, which I'm the queen of typos. I swear I will go through something five times and right there in front of my face when the email publishes is a typo. <laughs> but That's the so reality nice. is we're human. We make mistakes. So just double, double check your work, I think, is part of that process. Yeah, right. Especially because some of those links are going to have they might not even like try the link until it's the time to log in, the time to go to the sales page. And you want to make sure that if if you're inviting them into something else after the webinar or the whatever, that they can get to the next next phase. You want to help mm -hmm. walk them through that next invitation so that way you can help them even deeper. Because at yes. the end of the day, we're servants. We are servant leaders. We That's what we're here for. We, we are in business. We make money. But we're also here to serve. We're here to serve our people well and to steward our gifts. So like if if they don't have another place to go, you, you might be losing people. Like you can't be doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So the more streamlined that process, the better. So let's talk about high ticket because you mentioned yes. low ticket, pay the invoice, then the contract. And so would you do that differently for high ticket? I would not because... When I, I was talking to a friend, she's a lawyer, and she was saying you want to get the money first and then sign the contract because they already have skin in the game and they can like if there was something, I don't know, some some reason, some le legal reason that you want to do it like that. I don't remember exactly. I'm not a lawyer, but she said, get the money first and then sign the contract. Mm -hmm. That's the order to do it. And I was like, OK, I was in a high ticket um, mastermind. And what they did was you sign the, you paid the invoice and then it gave you a web page, which I really enjoyed. It was like a web page with all your next steps. So it was like, one, sign the contract. Two, here are the links. Three, here's the logins to these different applications that you're going to need. Four, here's how you add everything to your calendar. And then I had a video walkthrough on how to do all these things, which I enjoy for high ticket. If I'm high ticket, I need you to walk. I need you to hold my hand. I need you to tell me exactly what to do because some of that stuff is very complicated. Okay, so, so then you're going to have, you're going to pay the invoice. You're gonna sign the contract. And when you have the contract, make sure that a lawyer has checked it or you're getting a template from a lawyer that is going to have exactly what you need in it because I have been sued before on accident because my contract was not in place correctly. I had a contract, but it was not specific enough. And they used the loophole because I'm not a contractor and I wrote that contract. I mean, not a lawyer and I wrote that contract. And so then I had my friend rewrite all my contracts for me. So. Make sure you have good contracts that says if you have a refund policy, specifically what that is, when you're allowing that. And then again, with the links and the login, like I said, I mentioned the membership that I'm in has a website. You log in, like you pay the invoice and then it sends you an email with a, like five different things on this website where you can always go back to, to do all the things to log in and it's got everything you have or send a really nice email. But I really just enjoyed the website. I didn't even think that that was like an option. I was like, whoa, that's really cool. I should do that. So the next mm -hmm. time I do my high ticket, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so and then I'm calendar, curious yeah. about that. I'm curious about that. Is that is that page customized to you or does everybody in that group have the same login credentials? So that is just like a, everybody has the same one, but it tells you how to get to those things. So it'll send okay. you your login and your email, but this is how you get to this, your Kajabi page. This is how you get to... The community, like, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I uh, mine is all set up in a, in a through email, but I love that option to have that page yeah. come up, yeah. It was both. So they did an email and then the page also. So like, yeah, I was like, okay, this is, this is real nice. Yeah. 
that's the Cadillac of <laughs> right <laughs> onboarding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like the calendar reminders also. So, so every mastermind call we get, we've got a, an email before we've got an email after with a replay, make sure you're doing those things. So people who aren't able to join can also go back and watch those videos because a lot of those trainings are going to be really important. And like I said, we're here to serve. So we want to make sure that everybody who's in our containers is served well. And so they've got a place you can ask questions and then um, onboarding gifts. So with high ticket, I like to do, I like to do a lot of bespoke um, sequences and things like that for my clients when I'm doing the high ticket stuff. So I will make a bespoke onboarding gift to send them. I will go to, there's different places you can go. Um, I like boxfox.com and I will go there and I will build a box tailor made for the person that I, this is my client. And I will send them that as an onboarding gift saying, thank you so much for allowing me to help you with this, this process. Like one person I'm doing their go level, go high level automations for another person I'm doing their, their, um, project management, doing their whole, all their SOPs and everything in their project management thing. So these are gifts that I will give them just so, so they know that I'm like helping them and I'm here for them. And then for longer containers. So these are just like small, small high tickets. But if I'm doing like a year long program, I also do handwritten birthday cards or handwritten birthday gifts, whatever that is. Um, another thing is on off boarding gifts and off boarding gifts. They don't have to be for me. I think that onboarding gifts are the most extravagant and the birthday cards are just a little thing to say, I'm thinking of you and you are special to me. Then offboarding gifts are just like another little like congratulations. You have, you have done this thing or thank you so much. You, you're on this next level of, of leadership or whatever that is. And so those offboarding gifts to me are really special because it's like the icing on the cake, the, the nice bow at the end of the box. That's just saying, we're tying this up. We're done. Mm -hmm. So I think I that those that. are really important. Plus, when you have those gifts and you've got tons of clients, you need to put those in like a CRM to remind you that sends you emails of when to do these things. Because if you don't, you're you're going to get lost in the sauce. You're going to be like, I don't know who's what, who's this. And even if you have an admin, they can get those emails or you can send those those triggers to Slack. So, you know, OK, this person's birthday is coming up in a week. I need to do this today or in the next two days. So that way they'll get to them on their birthday. Just some things to think about. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, so when we talk about high ticket people, so we have, we went through the whole process with the low ticket people, right. And doing the, the invoices paid, the contract is signed, membership courses are sent all the details via email or a page, like you said, for your mastermind, I guess, whatever anybody wants to do could be, could be that. Um, and everything's automated. It's the same process for high ticket, but now we're just adding in that little extra flair or bonus of a gift to them. Yes. Okay. That's, those are my favorite actually, because I don't know, like I wish I could do it with all my low ticket clients, but I run a membership, so it's not really worth it to me. It's not financial. How about this? It's, it is worth it. It's not financially smart to do it for the low mm -hmm. ticket. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, if you wanted to do something, you could do something like just send a card, um, right. welcoming them or something like that, if you wanted to, yeah. I guess, um, just because it's less expensive. Okay. So let's talk about, I know we're talking mostly about onboarding today, but you mentioned offboarding and you mentioned sending that gift. Is there anything else related to, so let's, let's say we onboard our client and let's say we have a six month program. So we onboard our client, we work with them for six months and then they have the choice to stay on or go away. And if they choose to end that working relationship, that's when you would send that gift to them as a thank you for working with you for that time period. What do you recommend throughout the course of working with someone, any other things that we could do for, say, client retention, processes we could put into place? Yes, the birthday cards, little things like that. Um, but then are there things like that you implement in terms of on a on a scheduled basis, asking for testimonials, asking for um review of a case study or things like that, that you do as part of that client journey or that you recommend we do as part of that client journey. Yes, for sure. So like when they're onboarding, part of 
part of the process should be an intake, right? So you're mm -hmm. going to ask them, why do they choose to work with you? What is, what is their biggest struggle right now? What do you need help with? And so like at that three month mark, then I would reevaluate asking some of those same questions, but what has helped you the most? What was the one thing that was pivotal to your success now? And what do you call success? Because not everybody calls success numbers necessarily. It could be mindset or a redirection of their business. I can hear the Holy Spirit more clearly. It de depends on what their version of success is, right? Mm -hmm. So then you ask them again at three months and then you ask them at six months. And then at six months, if they're, if they're ready to go, even if they're not ready to go, I would ask them, what is one thing that you would say is the most pivotal to your success at this point that, that I've helped you with? And what is one thing that you think that we should add to this program? Or what is one thing we should take away from this program? Because sometimes, like, I like to do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm the queen of extra. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's too much. They might be like, I don't need all of these calls. These two calls were really pivotal to my, my success. And if you see a pattern, you start to look at these patterns. You're like, okay, I need to pivot my program because my clients are telling me what they need. And so I need to be listening to them and serve them better, right? And then if they do want to leave after six months and you're you're asking them, like, they have a chance to renew their six months. You need to find out why they're leaving. Is it something that you're not doing? Are you not showing up well for them? And during every single one of those, I ask them for testimonials. Express not the first one, obviously, but the third, the three month, the six month, the the eighteen month, and then the twelve month. I did math wrong. Nine months. <laughs> but I ask them for testimonials because I want to know. I want to show them and show other people how I'm helping them. Mm -hmm. And the best thing to do is get videos. Video is is really big right now, especially because of chat GPT, AI. You can't, I mean, you can't funk a video, but let's, like, most people aren't going to, right? They're going to say how they really feel on video. And it doesn't seem as, as fake, faked mm -hmm. as it is, as, mm -hmm. you know, words can be. Mm -hmm. So get video testimonials. And then yeah. also when you're doing your, your next iteration, I love bringing on past clients to talk about their, their experience, like just how, how I made them feel, how their business has changed, how they've been emboldened, whatever that is that I'm doing in my container, whatever my takeaways are. So that way they can show people, yes, I was here, but now I'm here because of, I went through this program because of the people that were I was surrounded by, because of the, the strength and the Holy spirit that was inside me. All the things, right? So yes, all of those. I love just like onboarding and that client experience mm -hmm. because I think that that's what we're here for. We're here mm -hmm. for the people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you said something really key and that is that intake form at the beginning. I think anytime you have an opportunity to collect voice of customer that you can then use in your marketing materials is going to be very important. And I love having that intake form where you can get the baseline and then compare it to what you have going forward at three and six, nine, 12 months. Yes. It, even, so I just took, I just did a seven day faith and fast um, workshop. And even in that they were saying things that I'm going to use for the next time because they were like, this is so great. I, I didn't do this, blah, blah. Even if you're doing just a conversion event, though those testimonials are also important. So just be having your ears to the ground of what your clients are saying, potential clients are saying, why they are, they joined, why they are coming every single day and what they're getting out of it. So that way you can help other people because if you're serving them in this way, you can also serve more and more people in the same way in the same event. Just do it again. Yeah. And it makes it so much easier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For me being like, I think this is what they need to. They're literally telling me exactly what they need and how I help them and why they love this. Mm -hmm. Their words, not mine. Yeah. And that's absolutely critical. If we want to connect with our ideal audience without having to like push sale, you know, just yeah. be able to connect with them and let them see what we do, how we do it, and the benefits that are available to them by working with us. That's why I love working with the Holy Spirit because it just feels less pushy. It feels like I am just offering this invitation that I have and take it or leave it. But this is what we do here. You know what I'm saying? And it and 
when other people are saying the same thing that you're saying, when we're talking about potential clients and conversion events, um, past clients, it's so easier to say, this is what we do here. Take it. We we do this in integrity. We do this with the Holy Spirit. Come on if you want to. And if it's not your time, that's also okay because the Holy Spirit's not going to show up in the way that you need to in order to be emboldened by this program, this process. You're not going to make more money or make more sales in this process if you're not ready for it. So I read in my devotions this morning how we can shut out the enemy, but only if we have the Holy Spirit with us. And I think having these onboarding processes, offboarding, the, the, the time frames designated when we're going to follow up with our clients, when we have those things designated, we follow through more and it enables us to stay focused and to work diligently and be more disciplined in our business because we don't have the distractions of comparison, fear, doubt, all those other things that can come into play when we're constantly trying to do things spur of the moment when, okay, I've got a new client, but now I have to stop what I was doing and I have a deadline so that I can onboard this person because then you have increased risk of mistakes. You have increased risk of poor customer service. You'll decrease your retention rates. You'll decrease your referral possibilities and all of those things whenever we don't have things in place. So I love that you said that about bringing the Holy Spirit in. And when we have him in our business and we are depending on him, we're more likely to move forward and move forward faster. Even if we aren't moving forward necessarily faster, but like more intentional, right? Yeah. We're not we're not spinning around with all the comparison. Like you were saying, like, like social media is made for us to feel that lack. I feel like feel lack, feel un, not worthy. Like we're behind and we should never feel like we're behind if we're working with the Holy spirit, because we are right on time. We have God's divine time. And so like, if we're worried about God's time versus man's time, we are never behind. We are doing exactly what we're supposed to do when we're supposed to do it. And sometimes I will get stuck in, oh, my coach said that I should do it like this, so I need to do it like this. But really, I'm feeling like that might work for them, but that's not what God has called me to do necessarily. So I need to do what God is telling me to do in God's way because there's a myriad of different strategies out there, and they all work, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be strategies to, to make a million bucks on the internet, yada, yada, yada. But your strategy is as unique as you are through, through God. So your strategy has to be different and will be different, but it's nice to know the different strategies, what are possible. Maybe if you're a coach and you're teaching these strategies, or you can say like, oh, Robin needs this strategy because she doesn't use social media. Let's use this for her. But you yourself need to figure out what God has called you to and how to do your long form content and how to do your short form content and what those are for you, because you are going to be unique and you're going to onboard differently. You're going to connect with people differently. You're going to love people differently. I'm kind of the tough love girl. So like, I'm going to, I'm not going to tell you you're doing everything great. (laughs) That's just who I am. So whoever you are, you need to be that in all parts of your business. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that, that is so key. And that brings us to like your personal brand. And the thing is, if we are not being our authentic selves and working in integrity, with what we're being called to do and doing what we say we're going to do based on what we're called to do, then we aren't representing ourselves. And if we're not showing up to serve and we're showing up to serve ourselves instead of others, again, we're not going to achieve success. Mm-hmm. However you define success. I don't care how you define success. Some people define it by money. Some people define it by impact. I'm more of an impact girl. So you don't hear me talk a lot about money because I don't think it's anybody else's business how much money I make. But, I, you know, we're on the Internet and everybody talks about it, which is fine. No judgment. It's everybody has a different definition of success. But I think that, again, goes back to what are we being called to do? So when we implement these processes and we have them in place, we're able to follow through on our calling, do the things that we say we're going to do because we're not distracted by these sudden interruptions of things we have to do. Plus it's a capacity thing, right? I was reading in Isaiah yesterday, Isaiah 54, and he's talking about to open your 
Oh, like expand your tent, right? He's telling mm-hmm. the women to expand their tent. And back then, when you expanded your tent, it's not like you just went to Walmart and got a new tent. Or you just, it was like, you had to like <laughs> open these walls. You had to shear some sheep. You had to like make this yarn and twine. And you had to like do all these things. It was not an easy process. But he was telling them to prepare for the abundance that's going to come. And these processes will allow you to do that. Because if I'm walking every single client through this onboarding, I will not be able to expand my tents. My tents will be restricted to the, if I'm going to serve them well, right? To a few people, because I want to serve them at a high, like a high touch level. But this allows me to do that. And even more clients because it's automated because Mm -hmm. I already know what they need and I can just do it automatically. And I can't expand my tents, expand my impact. Like you're saying, my impact is more important to me than the financial, the impact, the lives saved going to Jesus, the, the people that are walking in their calling, that is important to me. And I can't do that if I'm walking, if I'm hand-holding everybody through an onboarding sequence. No, mm-hmm. let's 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 automate this because I need to be where they are and impacting them, not just like, okay, this is how you log into this. This is how you log into this. Here's your email and password. No, that, that's not what I'm here for. I mean, I could do it, obviously, but that's not my calling. <laughs> right. Exactly. Handholding is not your calling. Um, and you can have a bigger impact when you're not handholding. Yes. Let's just be real. Right. Um, okay. So last question related to this, when we talk about these processes, we need something to be able to put these processes into place. So what do you, do you have systems that you recommend? Oh man. So I'll just go through what I use and then the types of systems they are. So I okay. use an all-in-one platform. So there's tons out there. I use Funnel Gorgeous because it has my my website. It's got my funnels in there, and it it has some automations in there also. Some people use ClickFunnels. Some people use Kajabi. Some people don't have an all-in-one, but that's just what I enjoy using. Then I also use a project management tool. I use ClickUp, and ClickUp will show me all the tasks and all the people. And then I could also use Zapier. So Zapier will zap different things into ClickUp so I can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I also use ConvertKit for my emails. I just send out emails through there. I could use it in Funnel Gorgeous, but I chose to use ConvertKit. Um, So that's pretty much all you need. You don't really actually (laughs) need Zapier. You need an email system and you need something that's going to a project management tool. Mm -hmm. You might need Zapier to connect them all, but at the, the bare minimum you need an email sequence, an email platform and um, Zapier and project management. Everybody <laughs> needs to know what the, what's going on. We run businesses yeah. and these are not like simple businesses. So we need to have something where we can see everything at a high level and then give things to other people and or organize them so we can do different tasks at different times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting that you say Funnel Gorgeous because Funnel Gorgeous, I believe, is a go high level platform, right? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. And I use a go high level platform too, but mine is called click automations. And the thing I love about mine is that I have now my website's on WordPress, so it's totally separate, but they're connected. So they talk to each other. I don't have to have Zapier and I have my email is in that platform. I have my contracts, my automations. I have my project management. I have social media scheduling, like absolutely everything invoicing everything I need is in one platform. I used to have like 14 things that I had zaps coming in and, <laughs> you know, for <laughs> forms in jot form or, you know, whatever. Yes. And um, it was so overwhelming and it was very expensive. So mm-hmm. I switched over to the go high level platform, which is it's white labeled click automations. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I love it for the service they provide, but I love it for the simplicity of having everything under one umbrella. I have one login, which is, how great is that? <laughs> and then when you have a team, you can just add people there. Like exactly. Can be a high level. Your courses can be in there. It is, yep. it is a legit robust program. Yeah. And that's just it. We have the membership. We have our community. We have everything, our online courses, everything is housed there. And it's just so remarkable when it comes to the simplicity that it enables me to run my business with. I think that's important. Something that's simple that you don't have to go to all these different places to figure out. I yeah, just like absolutely. ClickUp because 
I don't know. I don't know. I just like click up better for yeah. project management. But but I mean, like people use, like you said, go high level for project management. Mm -hmm. It's really personal choice. I think I don't think it's yeah. we can't say there's one right and one wrong because there's so many different. And I think that's the key is that you have to find something that you can use with ease. Otherwise, you'll stress yourself out and there will be more errors or risk of error. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So let's switch gears for a second, Jeanette, because I would love for you to tell the listeners how your faith has influenced your entrepreneurial journey. Oh, my gosh. That's who. So when I first um, became a Christian, oh, okay, so I was like a Christian forever, right? But walking with Jesus and being obedient was very recently. That was... Probably when I was um, a new mother, so about six years ago, I decided, okay, I'm going to actually walk this Christian life out. And it has been nothing but seasons of surrender and following his directions. And the surrender has always been so hard because after being in the military for 11 years, it was always, okay, people want this thing done. We've got this project. We've got this mission. I am going to make this happen. And if I can't make it happen, it's not going to get done. I was my own God, if, if you will. So I was like, so coming back to a place of surrender and being like, okay, God, I'm going to let you tell me which way to go. And I'm going to follow your direction. Even when it seems crazy, like God said, give your car away to these people. So I did. And that was crazy. God said, do this thing. So I did. And it was crazy. God said, sell your house and all your stuff. So we did. And it was crazy. But every time we've done something surrendered in that state, God has not only been able to bless us, but has been able to use us to bless other people. Because at the end of the day, it wasn't about like how comfortable we were. It was about spreading God's God's kingdom and having people see Jesus by looking at us. So that's what I want at the end of the day is like, I want everybody who comes in contact with me, who sees me on the internet, who watches a YouTube video, who listens to a podcast of mine to be like, oh. I know Jesus. I know she knows Jesus because of the way that she is from her heart posture. And so when we come from a place of that, we can not only share Jesus's love, but we can bring people closer to the fold. If I had never seen the girl that I knew that was building a six and seven figure business from her house, homeschooling her kids while also loving Jesus, I would have never knew that was a possibility for me. So I'm just trying to be an inspiration to other people like she was to me. And I was watching her and I was like, People homeschool, people like love Jesus and build businesses. Like you don't have to be poor to to be a Christian. I was like, okay, this is a whole new revelation of possibilities. And so then obviously I had to go in the scripture and find out like, is this real? And it was. And I was like, oh yes, I am all on board for this. <laughs> What's Making your favorite verse? Kingdom? Yeah, I'm sorry. What's your favorite verse? Like, what do you go to? There was one that I was I was reading earlier. It was um okay, yeah, here it is. Eleven Hebrews eleven one. I'm I'm the nerdy person who's got like the Bible right in front of her all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So like this is like the hall of faith. And this whole section right here is so powerful to me because like faith is an action. It's like, I always think about faith as like when they're standing at the side of the river and God is like, I'm going to part the seas. You have to walk into it. And so they walk into it and then the seas were parted. It's not like they're just standing there waiting for God to move. And I, I have to remember that if I want God to show up, I have to make the first step. It's like going, like, I have no idea. Like when Peter went out of the boat, he was like, call me out there. So he's like, come on. And so we get the call and then we have to do the thing. We have to walk out there. We have to put our feet on not so solid ground sometimes knowing that God's got us. And if we fall, we're going to be picked up just like Peter was. Like the faith part to me is so big. And just like remembering that God, God's got you. I wear this bracelet every day. It says, God's got this. So I don't have to like I don't have to fear that I've got to do something it's always God and if I'm doing it for his glory I don't have to worry about the failure the failure is not mine if if I do a launch and it's 
quote unquote, unsuccessful by man's standards, that doesn't mean that a seed wasn't planted. It doesn't mean that something won't come of it. I might not ever know what it is, but as long as I'm doing what he's calling me to do, it's not my failure. Quote, like, like legit, it's not my failure. It is his victory and his failure. I, I take a lot of failures on myself. I'm like, oh, God did this great thing, but I messed up on this. And so now it's a failure. But it doesn't have to be my failure. It can still be God's failure, but God will never fail. So it's not even mm -hmm. a failure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's something you can learn from more than anything. Yes. And it's it's interesting that you say that too, that, you know, God's got this, but there, I've heard it says to, you know, people will say, oh, God's not going give to give you anything that you can't handle. There's so much I can't handle, but there's nothing he can't handle for me. And so I like to flip that switch too. And I think that all goes back to that word faith and having that faith. Jeanette, this has been absolutely fabulous. I loved like just getting to know you a little bit better on the faith side of things in addition to the process side of things and how your brain works. So super great, super, super fun. Will you tell the listeners how they can connect with you, learn more from you, and maybe even hire you? Sure. If you go to JeanettePeterson.com is my website. And then on there, I've got 40 prayers for faith and business and abundance. So if you go to JeanettePeterson.com slash 40 prayers, you can get those. And just there's a there's a thing on there. You can just sign up, follow me on the gram, um, hit me in the DM. I am always on Instagram. Um, that's my favorite place to be. So just DM me and I, I will get back to you and we can work together. I'll help you set up your automations, your project management tool i'll pray for you whatever you need oh that's so beautiful so sweet thank you so much for being here this has been such a pleasure thank you so much Robin. yes listeners if you enjoyed this episode please do me a solid please like it and give us a rating and review because that is how i continue to get such great guests as jeanette and more people can find the information because together we can create that ripple effect of good in the world. And that is what I really want to do. So thank you so much for being here. I love you all and I will see you all next time.